guys welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are doing well so today i want to get into a topic it's a little different this is more like a self relationship kind of episode and it's gonna be about triggers but before we get into that i do want to update you guys on what's going on so next week is gonna be my last episode for season two before i go on to season three i'm going to take a little bit of a break it might be like about two months three months i'm not sure yet but i will keep you guys updated as the time goes on and the reason why why i will be doing a little bit of a break also in that meantime i will be taking a summer class so i have to get my mind into this school mindset i've been at a school now i want to say seven years maybe or eight i can't even remember but i want to get my mind into the school mindset again and take that time that i need to do this summer class so i'm gonna be doing that during this break before season three just to also regroup for the podcast come up with new topics ideas all of that good stuff but please you can always dm me i'm more than happy to talk with you guys and whatnot so I did want to update you guys on that and I did want to update you on my row class. I have been so consistent. I actually enjoy doing it so much that I think it's sticking. It's just going to stay. <laughs> And now that the news part is out of the way, we can get into today's episode. And today's episode, like I mentioned earlier, is going to be about triggers. What triggers you? What doesn't trigger you? Why do things trigger you? And where does that really stem from? How do we deal with these triggers? Especially when it comes to relationships, I feel like there's a lot of triggers that happen along the way that we don't tend to realize until it actually happens in that moment and I do feel like triggers are mostly connected to the past which brings in a new set of fears that come into the future I often feel like the past sometimes plays a big role in the present and in the future and unfortunately as humans we hold on to this memory of the past especially if it was a traumatic experience in a relationship or a traumatic experience in general especially like even if it comes with just a yourself relationship so technically what is a trigger a trigger is basically referred to as an emotional response to a traumatic experience or a disturbing one at that and obviously there's a difference between being triggered and being uncomfortable which like i said this is more of a self relationship kind of episode so you want to always see what these triggers are are these internal triggers because that is a thing anger feeling overwhelmed loneliness anxiety sadness or revisiting an old memory that was a little bit traumatic for you those are internal triggers that can affect you and then you have external triggers which are basically your triggers that trigger you due to the environment around you if you're watching a television show a movie a specific time and date specific sounds smells scents those types of things cause the brain to be triggered it's like an, uh, an alert like oh shit i remember this from somewhere i remember this from xyz so now let's get into some triggers that deal with a relationship because i feel like there's always some kind of trigger with that and the first one being trust and since a relationship is about trust and it's a big part of a relationship, some people have a hard time being vulnerable and giving up that part of them to someone else and giving that trust in someone else and making sure that they won't hurt them. And let's be honest, when we don't have trust, shit feels so uneasy in a relationship. You never get to feel at ease. 
another trigger that I can see being an issue and I myself have done it and have felt it and it has to do with your partner's actions. There are certain actions that maybe the present person that you are talking to or currently dating might do and it triggers you because maybe your ex did that and because it can trigger you or whatever in whatever way I feel like it brings up feelings from the past that can be even insecurities if you've had them before with whatever action this present person is doing I know for me one of my triggers that I noticed that when I see an action of someone I'm talking to or I'm dating or anything like that it automatically turns me off it already makes me jump to a situation that I have been to in the past. One of these triggers for me is actually when guys smoke too much weed. And you can call it a pet peeve or whatever. And don't get me wrong, I have nothing against that shit. Like, you can smoke whatever. Dude, I used to be like a major pothead back in the day when I was like 18, 19. But whatever that's the past but my thing about it is I used to date a guy back in the day probably in my 20s and he would smoke every single day and night day and night he was always so high that when I wanted to have just conversations with him and just have one-on-one heart time, it was so difficult to get that from him because he was always on cloud nine. He could never pay attention. Everything was so funny. And for me, that shit didn't fly. In my head, I was like, what the f- is wrong with this kid? And then as I got older and I met my other ex, he was a smoker too but he handled it in a different way but now he left an emotional trigger on me because the way he would handle certain situations when he was high was pretty much appalling for me this ex when he was high he would literally avoid me just not even bother not even pay attention it was like I didn't even exist I would lay in the bed with this man and talk with him and he'd be so focused on his phone not even paying attention to one word I'm saying which proved to me that this man was literally doing the same shit that my other ex had done And ever since, I am just not a fan of it. At least not when they smoke every single night, every single day. Like, I get it. You want to relax, whatever. You know, indulge in it a little bit. I'm cool with that. But when it's an everyday thing, a consistent thing, no thank you. You gotta go. And obviously, that's just one example. There's so many other triggers from past exes or past dates that I've noticed or actions that I've noticed that leaves this little like memory in the brain that never lets you forget for some reason. Another major trigger is when you've been cheated on in the past. Obviously it goes along with trust but when you've been cheated on that be physically, emotionally, whatever the case may be, you start thinking in your head, is this person being honest with me? Are they still talking to other people? Are we exclusive? Are we not? What is going on here? Am I the only one they're with? What are they doing when they're not talking to me? Etc, etc. And it makes you feel vulnerable when you enter any new relationship. And it's not easy for you to just give your trust to somebody. I have to admit, I'm one of those people that even though my ex, one of my exes did what he did, I've had to learn to let people earn their trust. I don't just give it willingly like that anymore. And in today's world, the way shit is, no one deserves to just be given trust like that. If we have to earn shit in life, people can earn trust on one another. Prove to me that you're fucking worth it. Prove to me that you want to be with me at this point. Because the way dating is nowadays, 
nobody's proven me shit besides I want to stay single because people ain't shit. (laughs) All right, so the next one I want to get into, this one hits home for me. It's emotional withdrawal in a relationship. This one trigger really triggers me personally. Because when I see someone withdrawing from me emotionally, I automatically get built with anxiety in me and I want to know why. Why are you pulling away from me? Why are you being emotionally distant from me? What did I do that got you to that point? Did I not create a safe space for you to tell me how you feel and vice versa? Maybe that person feels that way. And I have to be honest, when I am in a relationship or I'm dating, I have to catch myself in my own footsteps when I emotionally withdraw. Because I myself know what that feels like. Obviously, to fix a situation like that, you need communication. Communication, like I always stress, it's super important. Because I feel like once the person opens up to you and tell you why they're less available to you, you get a little more relief to whatever you were feeling. That be anxiety, stress, sad, whatever the case may be, you at least get some kind of closure that you needed for yourself and your own feeling. With that said... I think the last kind of trigger within a relationship that I want to get to is boundaries. Because when you don't express yourself with your boundaries, you pretty much limit the communication of your needs. And that's really important in any relationship, obviously. And then we end up building this kind of resentment because we didn't want to hurt their feelings by telling them our boundaries. If you're the type of person that says, hey, I'm not really much of a texter, but call me, you have to let that be known. Because if she or he is sitting there texting you up a storm and you're not responding until like four or five hours later, you're going to leave this person wondering what the hell is going on and why you're not responding to them, which creates nervousness, anxiety, stress, anger, sadness, all these unnecessary feelings that could be avoided if you're just straight up with the type of person that you are. We're human beings. Everyone is different. Nothing is going to be the same. Not every partner that you partner up with is going to want the same things that you want. You have to be considerate of that. For me personally, I went through something like that. That's why I even mentioned it. Because someone I dated, when I would text him and, you know, see how the day was going for him and blah, blah, blah. This man would not answer me for hours. And I'm talking about it's about to be the end of the day type shit. And that shit would annoy the living day out of me. And I'm like, dude, what the f***? Like, why can't you respond to me? And it wasn't until I want to say a month or two after he was like, I'm sorry, I'm not a big texter, I prefer a phone call, and I'm just busy at work, yada, yada, yada. But for me, that was so annoying because in my head, I'm like, why wouldn't you just tell me that? And I have to say, it is a trigger now because when men don't respond to me, and it's four hours, five hours later... I already want to cut you off like you're wasting my time and if you're busy tell me you're busy it is not that hard to communicate to someone what takes five seconds to write up is not that serious so I don't see what is the big deal if you cannot make that little line of communication with the other person triggers are built up from actions that have been done to us And we have to find a way to heal with that and cope with that. I personally have found my own little mechanisms and ways of dealing with certain things that trigger me. And the first thing is that I do journal. 
I do enjoy that thoroughly. Expressing myself on paper, I don't know, something about it just makes me feel free. I can say what I want, how I want, and no one's judging me besides myself. And at the end of the day, these are feelings that I need to express. So if I can write it all on paper, I am cool with that. Another way to cope with any kind of trigger that you might have is exercising. Me, personally, I take my anger out on my workouts. I'm an aggressive person when it comes to working out. I don't know why, but when it comes to workouts, I love to feel like I'm about to die. Like, someone knocked the wind out of me, but you know what? I feel so much better. If I've had a day where I've been pissed off all day or anything like that, I automatically just take my ass to the gym or I do a workout just to release any tension. And I do the same thing with any kind of trigger. Because if a trigger has gotten to me so bad that it has pissed me off or got me annoyed, you best believe I am taking it out on the gym. And last but not least, I think being mindful of what has triggered you and why it has triggered you is super important. Because when you're mindful of these things, honestly, you heal so much better. You get to reflect on it. You get to think on it and understand why it's triggering you. Why do you feel the way you do? When you take steps for yourself, honestly, you become a better version of yourself. Triggers are natural and it happens to everyone even the best of us so i feel like when it comes to these kinds of things don't feel bad about it it's completely normal just learn to really understand why they happen and why you feel this kind of way to whatever situation it was and with mindfulness you also get to learn your body. Know how these triggers actually affect you. Your heart could be pounding more. You get an upset stomach, shakiness, or you get sweaty palms. You become more sweaty. There's certain indications that your body will give you. And at the end of the day, remember, this is completely normal. So own your feelings become one with them because it's always going to be you and your feelings at the end of the day because triggers evoke plenty of emotions so whatever you're going through just know it's okay if you're feeling pissed it's okay but if you want to become better at that and fix that trigger and not let the trigger get the best of you I really feel like if you just reflect on it After you've noticed any kind of change, maybe like I mentioned before, your heart is racing more or anything like that, I feel like it's great to look back at that and think what caused you to get there. Maybe it was something small or maybe it was something big. So take a step back, trace your roots, see what's going on, get to know yourself Healing is always the best way. I've learned so much about myself now that I've been single for a while and certain things bother me. I've learned to see why they bother me, write them down, and then write the reasons why I think they bother me. But anyways, guys, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this little episode and I will see you guys next week for the final one. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, guys, if you're watching on my YouTube. Bye.